Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Regame to the Com video, we're going to be discussing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with AMD and Threadripper, because the story continues regarding the four processor dies which make up this processor. Then we're going to move over to Intel, because we're going to be seeing an 8-core 16-thread CPU in the second half of 2018. And then we're going to finish with NVIDIA and the Volta Tesla V100 benchmarks, which have popped up onto the internet and they are as you can imagine shock and horror very impressive so uh, to give you a quick overview of the uh, Fred Ripper situation it does actually feature four dies this was uh, discovered by DeBauer and uh, he essentially deleted the processor removed the four dies filed them down and yes you can actually see the processor cores the you know the bits and bobs which actually make the processor are making that very technical however james pryor who is an official amd employee to quote the gentleman's twitter but in reality he is their product manager he actually tells us that fred ripper is not an epic processor Different substrate, different dies, two dies work, other two have no paths to operation. Basically, they're rocks. Uh, another individual, Ian Cutress, who is also pretty well known in the industry, of course, as press slash journalist, he provided a very basic um, diagram of what we're looking at. Uh, and it appears that, yes, at least James uh, is telling us that conceptually they are right. So it looks like dies that work either become Ryzen or Threadripper, depending on the quality of those dies, and dies that fail either get essentially put to Threadripper as the dummy dies, or basically thrown away slash recycled slash whatever. In other words, those dies which are um real are damaged they're not functional so let's say magically if you were to be able to transport them with you know a teleporter technology obviously it's not realistic but let's say you could uh, with all of the parts intact and then somehow put them together into another processor they still would not work so they are dummy that uh sorry damage that's not a surprise i kind of figured that amd wouldn't be wasting legitimately working silicon but it appears that, no, there are no paths, the motherboard does not support this, so most likely, at least if you take this at face value, we are not going to be looking at a 32-core, 64-thread processor from AMD at any time soon. So the purpose of those broken dies is quite simple. It's basically just to balance the cooler, which kind of makes sense. I mean, it, there is no real legitimate configuration that you could um, have with at least, you know, traditional coolers i mean yes they could probably have ones that specifically would be developed for this but they'd be messy and people would complain and you wouldn't be able to utilize current cool it would just be a bit weird and so with this it's the simplest solution and that's to be honest with you the best way of engineering anything there are a couple of ways to engineer things and i'm not by any means a process engineer but when it comes to stuff like this it's like you can either go the simple way or you can go the complex way so the convoluted longer way it might be a little bit better in theory but the simple way where you don't need to worry about customers needing to buy specific parts it's a lot easier for manufacturers of you know coolers when they're actually putting uh, the, the you know the heat spreader and all that stuff together and honestly it just gives them a purpose of these essentially dud dies now does that mean that it's definitely not going to happen maybe 2018 i think to be honest amd don't want to eat into the sales of epic am i disappointed yes do i think it's possible it could happen probably no okay next one intel intel are going to be launching an ice lake 8 core 16 thread mainstream cpu in the second half of 2018 now this will be supported on the 300 series platform now this cpu at least allegedly and we're dealing with information which has popped up on as usual the internets from eurocon who are a manufacturer of high-end laptops slash workstations this information popped up on a notebook reviews forums he said we are planning to update the tornado f5 to z390 chipset supporting 18 sorry 8 core 16 thread cpus coming second half of 2018 we will launch f7 at the same time we will skip the z370 chipset meantime we added support for the quadro p5000 and 3000 
Now, this means, at least if you're taking this on face value, the Z370 will not be compatible with this. Which I imagine you're probably going to be pretty pissed off with. But that's a theory, because it does not outright deny it's not compatible. However, it depends. Like, if it's the second half of 2018, you still get, like, 9 to 12 months of a 6-core, 12-thread CPU. So maybe people would be okay with this. I mean, I'm not speaking on your behalf. You might be furious. You might be okay. Frankly, I think that AMD, uh, AMD have just basically pushed Intel to just go militant. And I think that they're just trying to ramp up production because they know that Ryzen 2, whatever it ends up being called, is going to be a very, very impressive. I don't want to cite numbers because honestly, AMD haven't. But I, uh, in my mind, I'm thinking that if AMD can increase the clock speed, obviously I'm, I'm just pulling a number out of my ass here, but if they can increase it 10%, so Ryzen goes to like 4.4 gigahertz. If they can increase uh, throughput of the CPU, another 10%. That's very, very impressive. And that's a six um, a 16 thread CPU. Now, will AMD counter with this? Will we see a, I don't know, a 10 core or whatever processor? I don't know. I don't actually know if they could do that with the current motherboard. And they have vowed to keep AM4 back with the compatible. It's going to be very interesting. I also would point out that of course we're going to see PCIe 4 introduced next year which means that bandwidth is going to go nuts. I have a feeling that this year and slash next year are going to be very very cool for PC technology and computer technology as a whole. Okay final small piece of news I say small because quite honestly not sure how many of you are going to be interested in this because it's it's talking about yes the Volta architecture, but it's primarily going to be deep learning HPC users, which I'm not going to say none of you are interested in, but I don't think it's going to be the vast majority of my audience. However, with that said, it's a very impressive score. Geekbench 4 actually has uh, a top score. Uh, this is of a DGX1 machine. I'll get into the specifications in just a moment. Of 743,537 that is, well, that's just gargantuan. Obviously, that's using CUDA. There are some other results which are OpenGL and uh, other bits and bobs. And this this just, to be honest with you, this ruffle stomps the uh, Tesla Pascal machines. It's way over double the second highest, uh, sorry, the third highest result, which is about 320,000 points. However... It's not like you're comparing this one GPU versus another GPU. There are eight, I just want to repeat that, eight Tesla CP, uh, GPUs in this thing. And each of those contains 5,120 CUDA cores. So that means you actually have, like, uh, I totally didn't pause it and use a calculator there. Uh, 40,960 CUDA cores and 500, sorry, blah, 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 5,120 tensor cores. That is bonkers. Obviously, this is not the type of family you could. You could use it, I suppose, for Quake. But um, I imagine that it's going to be kind of expensive just to increase your frame rate. But, you know, on a serious note, that is absolutely crazy. And I can totally understand uh, people who are content professionals, I mean, this thing has, I think the machine has like 512 gigabytes of total RAM just for any um, semblance of uh, doubt that this machine is absolutely beastly. And obviously, we've done the maths before. I mean, deep learning training of the uh, Pascal 100 is about 10 T flops. The Volta 100 is a 120, t uh, 120 teraflops, excuse me. That's a 12 times increase. And obviously, the rest of the specifications have also increased exponentially. So, FP64-32 uh, has gone from 5-10 teraflops to 7.5 to 15 teraflops, respectively. Deep learning. This is, of course, thanks to tensor cores, who's gone from 21 teraflops to 120 teraflops. That's six times the ratio in terms of performance. That is absolutely spanking the previous one. It's telling it it's a bad boy and giving it a good spanking because that is just ridiculous. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. I shall see you so soon, good sir or good lady. Take care. Bye for now.